Hi everybody, Johnny here. I'm going through CalTPA Cycle 2, Rubric 2.6. This is still under Step 2, Teach and Assess. Let's look at what's important here. So the essential question, how does the candidate engage students in self-assessment to build their awareness of what they have learned and support their progress toward meeting learning goals? So it's two-directional, all right? Um, so what matters in this one, plainly, student self-assessment. And the two things we want them to be aware of are their own progress and moving them towards further learning. All right, so two things, self student self-assessment, awareness of where they are, and giving them direction, supporting them to move forward. So let's look at the level three rubric, the place to start. All right. Now this one's pretty straightforward. You can see that there are two blocks here. There's one block here and one block here. We'll address each of them. But first off, we want to make sure we revisit this. You want to make sure that you meet all of the requirements for level three. So I'm taking apart the text for level three so you can set out learning goals for yourself. I'm going to bullet point them so you might use that as a checklist to move yourself through this particular rubric. So, let's read what it says here. Candidate provides a rubric for self-assessment by which students build their awareness of what they have learned and what they need to continue to learn to, me to measure their own progress towards meeting their learning goals. Okay, so for this particular one, the musts are, you have to have a rubric, Okay, now I'm going to suggest to you a move for this is to take your formal assessment rubric, which should have criteria set for your different learning goals, and just take one strand of that. Take one of the criterion, one of the learning goals from your overall formal assessment rubric, and use that as a strand to pay attention to a particular learning goal, which you might set up as a rubric for your student's self assessment. So that's a thought. And the second thing that matters here, so the first thing is rubric for self-assessment. The second one is this focus of students on what they learned. Okay. All right. So, you know, these are the things. Describe for yourself what things you feel like you're confident in. Okay. What things you're not quite clear about. All right. The next point is rubric focuses students on what they need to do to improve. So instead of just what they know, giving them direction for their learning, all right? So those are the three for the first block. Let's look at the second block. It says, candidate supports students in understanding the rubric and how to conduct self-assessment, all right? So the must for this is you must work with students to make the rubric understandable and usable. Don't just assume that, the, that students can use a rubric just because you give it to them. You have to tell them how it works and what it's for. All right. So let's go through this. To meet level three on student self-assessment, there are three requirements up here. You need to have a rubric for self-assessment. Student focuses students on what they learned. Student focuses students on what they need to improve and move towards the learning goals. And the fourth one, you must work with students so they understand how the rubric matters and what it means for their own learning. All right, so for level three, you have to have these four things. Let's reach a little bit and go to level four. All right, and as I've said before, often level four just requires a bit more work. Level three is where the concentrated work goes. You need to do so many things for level three, but sometimes it's just a bit more to get to level four. So it's worth aspiring to. So let's see what we have here. As you can see, there are, blocked, there are two blocks here. So let's take apart each block. First block says, rubric for self-assessment directs students to analyze complex content, specific concepts, or processes that engage them in, and here's the big part, higher order thinking. Analysis, synthesis, evaluation, interpretation, or transfer. So the assessment should be about higher order thinking, not just about discrete learning. So it's not how many words on the spelling test did you 
could you have gotten better? It's got to be deeper than that, right? Um, so under this particular set of musts, this is all about higher order thinking. Rubric must give attention to higher order thinking. So when you build the rubric for self-assessment, it has to be about higher order thinking. Right? For the second block, candidate includes adaptations or accommodations for self-assessment based on individual stu student assets and learning needs. Okay, So the must for this one, make adaptations, accommodations to the self-assessment or self-assessment process so that uh, that takes takes into account who the students are, their assets and learning needs. So this is making sure that you're at the form of your self-assessment is also asking questions that matter to the students about the needs they have for their learning, not just your needs for their content learning, and making sure that it focuses on their interests and their needs. So in that regard, you know, students may ask, be asked a direct question. What do you think you would need for yourself in order to be better able to do such and such and such and such? Okay. Or under need interests, it could be based on all we've learned so far, what do you think, what has spiked your interest? What makes you want to learn something more? Okay. So all of those things are adaptations and accommodations. Um, keep those in mind. So that is the requirement for four. So make sure that you have these two things. The rubric must give attention to higher order thinking and the assessment itself, okay, self-assessment, should be built in a way that reflects who the students are, what they're interested in, and encourages that kind of self-assessment about their own assets and learning needs too. Okay, so that's a level four. Let's take it to level five. Under level five, and you can see it's just one step higher. It's not a huge requirement, but that makes it probably worthwhile to consider. You need to have all of level three and four, plus candidate helps individual students to use the self-assessment results to focus on and establish revision to improve student work. Okay. So in this particular one, the must is you're using the rubric results or the self-assessment results to work with individual students to move them forward, to help them to move themselves forward. All right, Direct and support individual students to use the self-assessment results to improve or revise their work. How are we getting our students to own the self-assessment and supporting them to use that self-assessment to give direction to their own learning? So that's the level five. All right. So sources for evidence for this particular one, all about self-assessment. Remember the first place is all the annotated video clips. Okay, and this under self-assessment, you're going to talk about your choices for self-assessment, how you support students to use the self-assessment, how you support students to understand the self-assessment process. You're also for levels in four and five, talking about how you're using the self-assessment to connect to students' assets and interests and learning needs, but also to get them to be self-directed and motivated uh, for their learning based on their own use of the self-assessment. All right, so those are the kinds of things that will sh should show up in your annotations, in your written narrative, analysis of informal and student self-assessments. When you talk about your student self-assessments, you're talking about what you learned from them, but also how you organized and made them support student learning and, and self-direction. All right. So this is the rubric around self-assessment. I'm going to move on to the next one now. I hope this was helpful.